Hi there, it's Lori Dake again with Kale Realty, your Illinois licensed broker. And today we're going to be talking about rental listings, you know, how to interpret them, and then of course how to get the place that's really going to make you happy. Stay tuned and we'll get right into it. So here is what you need before you even do your search. We're going to go through the five W's. Maybe you remember this from grade school. Who's going to be on the lease? What your actual needs are? Where you want to live? Um, when you need to move in? Uh, why do you want to move? You have to ask yourself why. How important is it to you? And then how you plan on making that move happen. So we're into the who, as in who will be living with you. Any place that you're interested in, if you've got roommates, uh, everybody should have a, you know, a, a say so in where they're living, right? Unless they tell you, it says, Lori, I'm going to be out of town for the next month. Whatever you go with, if you want to FaceTime me or something, that's fine. Now, one thing I am really going to tell you to avoid doing at all costs is looking for an apartment before you have your roommates lined up. Because, uh, you know, uh, a, you don't want to be applying for a place. Oh, and two roommates. Well, who are the two roommates? I don't know. Doesn't look too good, right? <laughs> so make sure that you're ready to go on who all is going to be with you. Now, I'm actually going to include this is, you know, making sure that uh, uh, you're going to be able to list dependents. And a dependent, just to make sure you understand, is anyone who is not an adult. All right. So someone who is 18 years old, they can do an application. Now, I actually was told by an attorney that even if it's an adult dependent, well, by not allowing them to apply when everyone else is applying, that could be misconstrued as an ADA violation. So just count on everyone who's 18 and over to be applying, okay? Um, also, co-signers, uh, some places I know I do, uh, have co-signers do an application as well because you want to make sure that they're a viable co-signer. I've seen people try to be a co-signer when their credit is like 500 credit score. They've got a lot of collections and problems. They can't handle their own financial obligations, so how can they handle yours? Because what a co-signer is, is someone who's going to pay the entirety of rent past their own bills, right? So that's the other thing is I've had other people that had one of their grandparents apply. Sure, grandma had an 800 credit score. That's great. But grandma's living on just her social security. She barely has enough money to cover her own bills. She doesn't have, if in case she had to pay your rent, she couldn't. Therefore, unfortunately, grandma wouldn't make a good co-signer in that case even though she's got great credit. And just like I said, the other guy, just because they've got plenty of money, they have a 500 credit score. So that doesn't make the landlord feel like, oh yeah, they actually would give me the money to pay for the rent. You see what I'm saying? So you got to have someone who has good credit and has enough income to cover the entirety of the rent, pass their own bills. Some landlords, they want a certain amount pass their own bills some landlords want a spe special credit score. Usually I'm looking at 700 and higher for most of my landlord clients. That's what they ask of me. Uh, now, difference between if you're bringing in a pet or a service animal. Basic uh, rule of thumb here is if it's a service animal, that means it's a part of you. Uh, service animal is no different than 
uh, a cane or a wheelchair. It's, it's, you know, it's an animal. It's something you need to get by day to day living. Um, so a service animal doesn't pay for a security deposit, pet deposit, move in fee, pet rent, anything like that, because they're a part of you. It's like your arm, you know, um, but a pet, Pets are treated differently. Landlord doesn't have to take a dog. Landlord doesn't have to take a specific breed of dog. Landlord doesn't have to take a cat. Landlord doesn't have to take a bird because they squawk. Landlord doesn't have to take a fish because a fish tank could explode and you got water all over the place. So you have to find out, okay? Don't just assume that you can have it. Uh, another one is, uh, again, I think I mentioned it earlier, Who's actually going to be viewing the apartments? Sometimes you can rely on a video walkthrough. Uh, I've been trying to do uh, more of those as I'm allowed to based on, you know, current tenants and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, you know, maybe uh, you can come and uh, your partner can't and you just let them know or you give them a FaceTime or something or take extra pictures. So figure that out uh, before you start uh, apartment hunting. All right. So one of the things I wanted to point out, of course, is the biggest common questions that I get when people call me about one of my rental listings. Uh, probably the grandfather of them all. What's the laundry situation? Now, my listings, I'll tell you up front. If there is no laundry, I'll tell you, you know, how close there is one down the street or something like that. Otherwise, um, laundry situation, if it's in unit or if it's on site or if it's in the building. If I said it's in the building, that means without having to step outdoors and getting wet or rained on or cold or hot, uh, you can get your laundry down, you know, like you're going out the back door. If I said it's on site though, that mean you will experience some weather even if it's just a cool breeze because you're still sheltered by the stairwell or something. So that's an important one to know the distinction of. Uh, another one is the parking. Big difference in parking. Is it street parking? Is it permit parking or not? That means you got to get a permit, okay? Uh, if it's um, assigned parking or unassigned, unassigned means, well, when you get there, there should be a space for you. Don't know which one it's going to be. If it's assigned, uh, maybe they don't know when you're taking the listing, but when you are assigned a spot, like you are number 12, and that's going to be your spot forever in a day. Uh, another one is if it's garage parking or if it's a carport, carport just means it's covered, but it's not enclosed, right? And then, of course, uh, if it's just an exterior spot, which again, assigned or unassigned. Uh, another one is air conditioning. Well, air conditioning is not a gimme in the city of Chicago, so don't always count on that. However, if I did list air conditioning, uh, I would say if it's central air or if it's a window unit or if it's a, a wall unit, and I would tell you how many is. Of course, take a look at the pictures and you'll see where it's at too. Uh, another one, of course, is appliances. I'm usually pretty good about letting you know uh, if there's a, a refrigerator, a stove, a dishwasher, a microwave. Oh, if it's a refrigerator, I would probably tell you if it had an ice maker and a water filter, you know, stuff like that. If it's a door by door. Uh, also, if it's stainless steel, black, white, or maybe, you know, it's old school and it's almond or something. <laughs> And then, of course, um, I would let you know, too, again, about the laundry, if it's in unit or not. And I might even let you know if there's a hot water tank in the unit. Depends on if I know. Uh, another one is uh, utilities. Uh, what utilities come with it? Um, usually, I'm seeing where the landlord expects tenants to pay for electric, heating, cooking, gas, and hot water. Sometimes the hot water is included. Sometimes the heating's included. It's usually because it's radiator. It's an old school building. And sometimes even the cooking gas is included where the only thing you're paying is electric. 
I personally have not come across it yet where tenants are expected to pay for the garbage in the sewer uh, or the cold water, but always ask. Uh, another one is availability. Now, on my listings, if I said it's available now, the landlord's expecting you to start a lease immediately. We'll get into move in versus lease start in a little bit. Um, also, of course, um, square footage. Here's the thing. When it comes to apartments, square footage in Chicago, it doesn't really help you. Because if you've been in Chicago apartments long enough, you'll know that uh, quite a few of them have those really long hallways. And those hallways can be 100, 150 square feet of hallway. It's not usable space. So here's the thing I always tell folks, measure your rooms and see if your stuff's gonna fit compared to the room measurements that's provided. Or when you go to a showing and then you can take uh, measurements yourself. So get the square footage thing out of your head when it comes to apartments because it doesn't really help you if stuff's gonna fit. Okay, so we got a two-parter here is when you need to move in and where you wanna live. So the first thing I always wanna point out to folks is a move-in date isn't the same thing as a lease start date. Maybe you can't move in until the fifth of the month. Well, the landlord still wants that lease to start on the first and maybe he's not gonna prorate you, that's part of the negotiation. So keep that in mind. Or they might say, okay, well, you can start on the fifth, but we're gonna do a 12 month lease plus a prorated month. So it'd be a 12 plus month. So you would pay, if the listing said, uh, do at least signing its first month's rent and a move-in fee, Maybe they want you to pay a first full month rent and then the following month you pay the prorated amount. Kind of flipped. So just a little heads up on that. Um, where you want to move, it's real easy to figure out how you spend your day. Do you work all day and go home and go to sleep? Uh, do you work from home so you need to be able to look out the window and see a tree and go jogging, things like that. So figure out how you spend your day and figure out areas that's going to accommodate that. Um, what do you like to do on the weekends? If you're the type that's work all day and go home, go to sleep. And then um, on the weekends, that's where you're really uh, spending your time. Well, maybe you don't need to live right on top of, uh, you know, green space and stuff, but you need to be close to the train. Uh, and then on the weekends, you're just going to drive somewhere, you you know, take a bus or something. So think about that way too. Um, you know, and what you also want to do is try to be flexible on it. Um, uh, especially if you have, uh, a low budget or you need to move immediately. Well, maybe you don't get the pick of the litter, you know? So be flexible on areas to choose from. Okay, so this here probably sounds like a silly question that I'm gonna ask, but why do you wanna move? Seriously, uh, you know, common reasons, well, you're looking for lower rent. Um, maybe you wanna be closer to work or activities and hobbies that you enjoy. Uh, want to be closer to a school. Maybe you need more space. Uh, maybe you started working from home full time and you want a dedicated office. Um, maybe you're looking for better amenities. Maybe you're tired of doing your own dishes and you want a place that comes with a dishwasher. <laughs> uh, another one is maybe you're looking for better terms. Maybe you don't want to um, have to worry about uh, begging the landlord, negotiating to get a cat. Maybe you want to have a, a you know, a start fostering dogs or something. So that's a very common one for looking for better terms. Maybe you're looking to get a parking spot that's right outside uh, your back door, stuff like that. So these are all things to think about, you know, before you start your apartment searches. 
how important are these things? And you can refer back to another video that I've done on, um, on your needs versus your deal breakers to try to uh, uh, expand on that notion. Um, you know, if you know your reasons, your decision is going to be that much easier. All right. So on the how part, how to make your move happen. Okay. So here's the first thing I want you to do. Make yourself a pro and a con on uh, the apartments that you visit. Um, and then, you know, just have an actual on a piece of paper, a list, you know, I liked this. I didn't like this. I like this. I didn't like that. That way, when you get home, you can compare all the ones that you physically saw and you're like, okay, so this one, it's not meeting hardly any of my needs. I just thought it looked really cute in the pictures. So you can toss it. Uh, another one is when you settle on the one that you want to apply for, especially actually do this beforehand, get all of your documents together. You know, your photo IDs, your proofs of income. Um, if you have a, a job where you get paid cash, see if boss man will write you a letter on official letterhead saying, you know, uh, Lori makes on an average of 250 a night waiting tables. You know, she works uh, four nights a week. You know, that way um, it helps if you can't provide uh, check stubs or if you can't provide a bank statement where you have all your money getting put in there. Those two are the best. Tax tax records, your W-2s and stuff like that doesn't work. Uh, that just tells me you worked last year. That's not telling me you worked recently. So, um, other sources of income, of course, you know, that would be, uh, Hey, you're on employment. You're, um, um, you know, if you've got vouchers, uh, food stamps, whatever, anything that's a source of income, you get a stipend from your parents. Uh, that's cool too. Uh, another one, um, confirm that you've got all the money that you need and you are ready to go. So if you get approved for an apartment and they say, do at least signing his first month's rent and a moving fee, you can say, here you go, I'm ready because apartments do go fast on the ones that are popular and I don't wanna see you missing out. So have all that ready to go. If you know, you're making someone wait a week or two before they get the money, well, they're gonna keep showing the place. They're not gonna hold it for you. You know, they got to keep moving because technically that would be a fair housing violation not to keep showing it to the market when someone else is also approved and has the money ready to go. So they really, you know, it, it's, they really, you know, we do really do got to keep it moving. Uh, another one, um, before you apply, tell your current landlord that you're applying for another place. Let them know that you're moving because me, for example, I really do contact the landlords and property managers. And that's one of the questions I ask, did they tell you, <laughs> did they give you proper notice? And if a landlord gets blindsided, that could be a negative with the landlord you're applying for, you know, cause they think, well, you're going to do it to them too. So tell your landlord. Uh, another one is, uh, Whatever place you, like I said, after you've made your decision, you got everything ready to go, pounce on it. If you like the place, pounce on it. Again, there's other people that might take it out from under you, okay? Uh, another one is when you get approved or right after or right before, start coordinating your moving plans. That means start uh, getting boxes to pack up. Uh, having, you know, if you got your buddy helping you move or if you're getting a rental truck, pro tip, getting a rental truck or a moving company for the first of the month, especially in the summer, those guys are booked, okay? So you're going to want to try to schedule that sooner. As soon if you apply a whole month early, that's when you should be calling those people to schedule, okay? So just be ready for that. So I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or concerns. Of course, 
check out the listings I have and see if any of them do meet your needs. Do your little check off list. Contact me with anything I may have not mentioned that's important to you. I'm Lori Dake with Kale Realty. And of course, you can call me at 773-697-4474. Thanks again. And please remember, I always have time for you and your referrals.